What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Fluffy Flamingos. I got a haircut. Hope it doesn't look bad with the hats on. I'll do it this way. <laughs> I'll just keep the hat off. <laughs> yeah. Makes me look bald with it on. All right, today we're gonna be talking about something so important, something hidden, something that if you're a beginner, they, you, I promise you, you have no idea what this is. And for me, I wish I knew about this like day one. This is one of the craziest things in the magic community. It is a big stigma that you need to know. It is vital information that will enhance so many routines and open a whole new world of magic. Today, we're going to talk about Mnemonica Stack by Juan Tamariz. Okay, so I can only give you so much information in this video. Um, I'm hoping this won't like take forever, but it will take enough time to actually comprehend what is Mnemonica Stack, what is a stack, what you can do with it. However, from what I don't cover, there is the book out there, Mnemonica by Juan Tamariz. If you want to find out more information about this stack that he invented. This video will be more of a slight introduction for those who don't know what it is or have heard it and need to know more. Okay, so first things first, let's forget Mnemonica. What is a stack? A stack is a very particular order that you put your cards in. So for example, when you buy a new deck of cards, they come in NDO, or in other words, new deck order. Now we are coming up with a video pretty soon, talk about magic jargon, so all of the annotations and abbreviations, what all this lingo means, so stay tuned for that coming up soon. You'll be able to catch up real quick in the magic community on what everything means, because we do have our own slang. Now, there are there are hundreds of stacks out there that you could learn, and they're all useful. I've used a fair share of them. But ever since I've used Mnemonica, I've never gone back. There's no need for the other ones now. So typically, stacks are memorized. You should know your stack in and out. I would suggest looking into some beginner stacks to kind of start off and just kind of get familiarized with what it is and how to use one. So Stebbins is a good one. Aronson, that's a pretty good stack as well. If you want something really simple, you could look up the Eight Kings stack. Today though, let's loop back around to my favorite stack of all time, Mnemonica. Now, Mnemonica stack can be used for any number of tricks, any number of routines, including this following performance that I filmed for my buddy Willie at work the other day. Queen of Hearts? That's my favorite card. I think that's the one you chose earlier, right? Yeah. Okay, so the, the whole point of this trick is to um, eliminate influence, right? Yeah. So if you were to think of a card between one and, or, of a number, between one and ten in your head right now, you got one? Okay. Were you thinking of either three or seven? Yes. Yes, seven? Three? Okay, so reason I ask is because 67% of the population tend to pick those numbers, three or seven, so you fell in that category, right? So magicians lean towards statistics, they influence people, marketing is all about influence, right? So you know it's real, it's out there. So this is to eliminate any influence that I could have on you, right? So if I, if I take this and I spin it once, we get, say it out loud, two. two, and then if we spin it again, we get, <laughs> Okay, that was not the point, but you just spin this once, and we'll just see what we get. 11. Cool, and you, you said Queen of Hearts, right? And you chose the deck that you wanted. They're all shuffled differently. Yeah. yeah? Okay. Take a look over here. You said number 11. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. You said Queen of Hearts, right? And you, free choice. Like, I could not influence you to pick it. Flip it over. What do you got? Queen of Hearts, show the camera. Oh, what the they're, they're all different, right? They're all in a shuffled position. There's no way I could have known. Yeah? <laughs> Bro. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. So that's it, that's a performance, one way that you could use this stack. So a stack is just a very complicated way to make the deck look shuffled when it's not. It's very, it's obviously put in a specific order that you've memorized. So imagine the spectator says, I'm thinking of the Queen of Hearts, and you can immediately tell them with the mnemonica stack that their card is in the 11th position. That's essentially what you're gaining with any stack, 
is you can tell them the exact position. So a load of routines become possible. Any card at any number. So they name a card and any number and then you can find their card at that position. Of course, you'd have to force the number that the card is at, but there's loads of variations such as the Ice Cold Acon from Illusionist. So in the performance, I used an app called Tempest and that helped me achieve this effect. Also soon, I'll be making a video of my top five to 10 apps for your phone, magic apps. I swear by them and I promise you, you will too if you invest. So stick around for that as well. So yeah, if you'd like to know the method behind that trick, go to illusionist.com or you can just click the link down below titled Tempest. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at what this stack looks like. I do have two decks of cards that are always in this order. Now, there's a good reason for this. You could always do a third or a fourth, but I always think it's so much more fair because it's supposed to look shuffled, especially when you're dealing them out and everything. So I feel like to give the audience an option always makes it seem more fair. So I have two decks of cards. They're both in the exact same stack. And I just say, okay, which one would you like to use? And they can pick a deck. And then you say, okay, look, you can see it's all shuffled up and it looks shuffled. That's the whole point of Mnemonica. And they'll never know that the other deck is the same order. Because when you take it out, you can just shuffle it or whatever. Let's go ahead and take a look at the elevation playing cards that are in this order. And I'll just spread them out like that. Take a look like that. Look, it looks absolutely shuffled. No specific order. You're looking at it. You might be looking for a pattern to follow. And you may have noticed you don't see a pattern. And that's because there isn't one. There's no pattern to this. This is easily the hardest stack to memorize in the history of magic. Because there's no uh, there's no trick there's no trick to remember you can just you just have to memorize every single card in its position. Now I don't want to make this super hard, so I did leave the order in the description box below, so you guys can follow along and put it in this order. Now there is a way to get it from new deck order into new Monica stack, and that takes quite a lot of effort, a lot of time, and you can't do it in front of the spectator or anything. You're literally like. I'm trying to remember what it was. You have to reverse the diamonds and the hearts and then put it in spade heart diamond club order, then a quadruple anti pharaoh, um, and then pick up all the cards in a very specific order, cut at a two and in a black nine face down, deal eight cards, and yada yada yada. It takes forever. Personally, like just looking through the cards and putting it in their order individually much more relaxing go on ahead put it in that order and then just come back when you're ready okay so you should have your four clubs two of hearts seven of diamonds all set up kind of funny new monica stack the initials are ms you are now in multiple sclerosis now i know this was tedious and long but uh i mean it's worth it it's it doesn't take that much time literally like five minutes or less you can create miracles like I did in that last performance. Usually like I just keep it in this order. So when I do Tempest, I just use the same two decks or three decks or whatever options I want to give to them. That way I, they just, they deal down in a straight line and then I just pick everything up, put it back on top, put it in the box and then I'm, I'm reset. It's so easy to reset. I mean, you saw the reactions. It's, it's so, worth it but that's really it mnemonica is so helpful and i i really truly wish i knew about it so much sooner in my life the last thing i want to talk about is is my upbringing in magic how i i got to be here i've been performing since about 2014 so about like eight years something like that and i only found out about mnemonica stack maybe two three years ago something like that pretty recently but when i learned about this tool i used it non-stop now i didn't like incorporate it into every routine, but I did routines that incorporated it more often. Now, when I first started magic, I was doing just like really easy, like parlor tricks and you know, just really like cheesy things that you'll see your, your uncle do at like a family reunion. I am so glad I got from there to here where I am right now. I'm very proud of how far I've come, but I wanted to discuss someone who's been commenting on my videos lately. A new fan. The name is Ionut Voss or Vaz, something like that. Sorry if I'm super butchering that. But you've been commenting the last couple videos and you've said things that have really stuck with me. You said, quote, your magic tricks are like a treasure to be discovered, unquote. Now, I'm, I'm not saying this because I'm trying to brag, but because of something else that they also said. They said that one of my videos, a couple videos back, sparked them to 
do this hobby, like for the first time they were interested in doing magic. They said that I sparked an interest for them, and I want to tell you, don't let that spark die. Magic is a miracle. It's a memory, a moment. It is that spark that you're talking about. If you make someone smile or brighten someone's day with your trick, then it's no longer just a trick. That is a treasure unveiled. That's real magic. So to the community of people who are just beginners, who are just starting to get into this field, don't let that spark die. And if you have been in this community for a while and you're intermediate to advance, you're booking shows, then don't stop making those treasures. Don't stop making those memories and keep making those sparks for other people. That's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that this really introduced some crazy stuff into your future routines and your knowledge of magic, your history. This was breaking groundwork for me. Again, I hope this was helpful. I will see you guys in the next episode of Fluffy Flamingos. Don't forget to hit the bell for notification, subscribe, and smash that like button. Peace out.